I think there's a great similarity between being a musician and leading a team in a big enterprise, particularly an enterprise that is a 24-7 customer service orientated enterprise, that you're trying to pull together in both fields lots of intricate moving parts to make something that is actually a, a full proper coordinated effort and when you're playing the organ or conducting an orchestra or running an airport actually the techniques for bringing together all those disparate moving parts into something that makes sense overall is largely the same skill I believe. My musical interests were aroused when I was about 10 when my best friend at school asked me if I wanted to go and join the choir at church and being a 10 year old the first thing you say is no not really but when he said well actually you do get paid for it uh, my attitude changed a bit uh, so my musical interests and my commercial interests were sort of aroused at an early age and uh, when I went along to uh, have an audition for the choir I was very impressed by the organ in the local church and when I saw this big instrument with all these stops and levers and keys and pedal boards and things I was immediately stri struck that I wanted to play the organ from that point onwards and so I had lessons and um, got to grips with it quite quickly. The organ actually goes right back to the time of ancient Greece and the first organ was actually powered by water and the pressure of water um, created air pressure which then was blown through pipes to create a sound. In modern terms the organ is really the world's first analogue synthesizer because the sound is changed by bringing into operation different ranks of pipes and even a moderately sized organ would be would have several thousand pipes inside it of various lengths. The longer the pipe, the deeper the notes. And some organs in the world, there are some in Australia, in the UK, and certainly in the US, where most of the world's largest organs are, there are pipes that are up to 64 feet in length. So the actual uh, cycles per second is so few that it takes you know, pretty good ear to hear down to that sort of depth but that gives the organ its unique character. And every single stop on the organ actually brings into play uh, those different ranks of pipes, so you can change the character of the sound quite dramatically. Organs are quite complex these days. They bring together a lot of science and technology. You've got lots of memories to capture the different settings, and whilst you're playing a piece, you can change the sound of the organ quite dramatically. So it's that complexity uh, and that ability to actually bring all these different things together at one time that makes the organ such a fascinating instrument. So much so, it's been branded as the king of instruments because I don't think there's many other instruments where one person can create such a vast array of sounds and actually single-handedly drown out an entire symphony orchestra. It's that sort of power that I think makes the organ such a fascinating instrument. This particular type of instrument has no pipes like a real organ and it's a very clever system. The idea is that a recording has been made of every single pipe of a large pipe organ and there's three separate references for each note. The start of the note, the continuous part of the note and the decay of the note. And these three different sequences for every single pipe, for every single stop, are reproduced from a digital memory. So if I want to pull out a flute stop and play some notes on a flute, what I'm actually doing is in real time recalling from the memory of the organ the actual sound that was recorded when the organ was actually built. So here's the flute stop. That's a digital recording of an actual sound. And then I've got a tuba stop, which is nice and loud. And a fanfare trumpet. And then all sorts of different sounds in between, from an oboe. To another smaller trumpet.
and then you've got various other sounds, some quite unique to the organ. And then some very deep notes, because I have 32 notes on the pedal board here, which give us the sounds from the bass. So... And then there's some very loud reed sounds that go on the pedal as well. Then play a quiet combination of stops. Then I can gradually press more buttons. Until I get to my full button here, which is number eight. I can go from a fairly quiet setting to a pretty heavy setting and then I can couple together all the different keyboards and make a pretty big noise. And this is all helped along by a very clever box of tricks under the music desk here, which is, um, creates the delay environment and the reverberation you can hear.